Welcome to another C++ tutorial. Today I'm going to expand on enums or enumerators in C++. I had a comment basically asking a question, so I wanted to go ahead and answer that in another video to get you a little bit more exercise with enums. And also learn a new concept called string, which I don't think I've introduced yet. It's very powerful and you're going to love it. It's much better than character arrays. Anyway, so the comment is, how can I see the name of an enumerator from its position? So if there's an enum like name choice, and I want to know the name of the enumerator at that position, say position zero. So you give it position zero, and I want to return mark. Okay, so I'm going to interpolate some of this stuff, and in, in, in I think that he means I want to print mark to the screen. Let's just go with that. I am using Microsoft Visual Studio. So I'm going to include the stdafx.h. If you're using Dev C++ for some online compiler or other um, IDEs, you probably do not need this, and it'll give you an error. So if you have any errors, just get rid of this line six. Uh, Iowa stream, print to and from the screen, or print to the screen. You definitely need that. Okay. So what he's trying to do is, I'm going to give the example of what he's trying to do. Then I'm going to change it up and show you how I would do it quickly in a different fashion. So he wants to do an enum in C++ called name choice and he's gonna put a bunch of names in there like Mark, Tom, Joe, Billy. Perfectly fine. So Mark is assigned the value of 0, Tom 1, 2, and 3. In fact with with uh, Microsoft Visual Studio you can see that the uh, number is 2 there the number is one, look on the right hand side of that little comment, and so forth. But you can actually, which I haven't showed you before, you can actually start with a certain number if you'd like. Let's say Mark equals 10. That would mean Tom equals 11 and Joe equals 12, blah, blah, blah. So let's highlight Billy. And Billy is number 13. It doesn't matter what the number is because we're using the words Mark, Tom, Joe, and Billy. I don't care if this is 100 and, you know, 10,258. The next one is 10,259. It doesn't matter. In fact, I'll leave it on there. Let's let's do some work with it. Let's just go ahead and create a name choice called my class instructor and set it equal to Joe. Now print that out. This is this is what the commenter is asking to do basically. See how the instructor is. and put in he's right now understands he can put in my class instructor semicolon now this is going to print out Joe's position value so if mark is 10258 Tom would be 10259 and Joe would be 10260 and that's exactly what we're going to get we're going to hit F5 build it it'll run and we get 10,260. Now the commenter does not want 10,260. He wants the word Joe. So let's close that out. And don't forget, I do have this pause thing in there still. I'm sorry, but for a while, that's going to be there. The instructor is not 10,000 blah, blah, blah. It's Joe. There is a way to do this in C++ because C++ is very powerful, but it's not practical. And let's go ahead and learn something new so that we don't have to worry about this advanced stuff that really isn't meant for this. So delete the enum altogether. We don't need it. We're not going to do enums anymore. Okay? So we're going to include a new library, which I'm not sure I've talked about, called string. Standard string. It's very, very useful and powerful. In fact, we're going to be using string from here on out, so here's a good introduction to it. We're going to create a standard string. which is just like creating an integer or a double, or a character, or anything else like that. So a standard string called name choice. However, instead of just a string, which you'd normally do name choice equals mark, and then you can create more strings called um, name choice two equals John, and so forth. Name choice three equals Billy, and so forth, which is all valid. We're not going to do that. We're going to create an array 
of strings to make it a little bit easier on ourselves. So standard string called name choice. We're going to make that a string array. I'm not sure what size, so I'm going to let it initialize the size automatically. But once that size is set in most arrays, it would be set. But in a standard string, you're going to see later down the road that it's not quite set in stone. So we're going to set this equal to, in brackets, mark Tom Billy and Joe, whatever it may be. So you have a standard string called name choice that is an array of names, and the arrays, any array starts with zero, position zero, position one, position two, position three. So let's now print out to the screen the instructor is. name choice sub 2. And which one would that be? 0, 1, 2. So Billy. This is not going to print out a position. This is going to print out the actual word Billy. Hit F5. Uh, build it, yes. Build errors. I don't want to run anything else that was built before. Let's see what the errors are. Ah, I don't know why I have this still here. So let's just delete that. One more try. F5, build it. The instructor is Billy. See how that works? And if you wanted uh, Joe, you would do three. Hit F5, build it. The instructor is Joe. So I believe that this commenter was trying to do something along these lines, and I think this is a better method than using enums. Now you can use enums, and then there's a standard map that you can use. But we're going to get into those a little bit later. So for now, using the techniques that have been shown thus far, I believe this is exactly what he's looking to do. Hope this helps. If not, I'll throw some more videos and try to video comment on a few more of these. 